Good evening. Good evening. I'm glad to have each of you here tonight for our, our uh, second midweek evening service uh, during Lent. Uh, good to have you here as we gather to, uh, to hear God's Word and, and, of course, during the season of Lent as we prepare for Easter, just to, uh, to understand and, and more of what God has for us. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, something I think we all have dealt with at one point or another, but uh, being anxious. So we'll hear what God's Word has to say and some of the ways we can respond to those, those type of situations. Uh, at this time, let's rise and start with our opening song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, Lord, I call. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the hear my cry for mercy. As I, call to you for help. As I lift up my hands. Praise be to the Lord. For he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart leaps for joy. And with my song I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people. A fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Please be seated.
The Lord be with you. And let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, surround me with your steadfast love and faithfulness. Help me in the midst of life's storms. Give me the confidence to know that in the shadow of your wings there is refuge. Restore me and give me comfort that I may give you praise and thanks. Amen. Our reading tonight is from Isaiah chapter 43, beginning with verse 1. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. This is the word of the Lord. Let's join together, confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, that, that's a greeting I've been using, I know, for a while. And, and honestly, just about any pastor 
uh, or all sorts of pastors will use that greeting uh, as the beginning of their messages. Is anybody familiar with the specifics of where that comes from? Unless you were at first service today. Does anybody know specifically where it comes from? Peggy, come on, you're always... I stumped Peggy. She got it right. Okay, here I said I stumped Peggy, but she got it. Yeah, Paul, ha- Paul uses these greetings all the time, somewhere in the beginning of one of his letters. So Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, whatever, there's, uh, he will use that phrase, right? Grace and peace to you, uh, or some variation of it. Um, we hear it so often, I, I think kind of it, it just kind of goes past us. So I want to take a second to look at, at two quick parts of it. First, the, the word grace. We say grace to you. What am I inviting to you? What am I asking God to give you? What, is, what are we talking about there? What is grace? It's right, so another churchy word we use all the time. It's a little interactive tonight. Now, I had to threaten first service with, you know, we had chapel at 1 o'clock, so we had to end cut off. We, got all, we even started early tonight, 6.30, right? So we, we got more time. What's grace? We talk about it all the time. What do we have? Okay, good. I'm going to have to quiet this section down now. She's just showing off. Good. Thank you, though. God's undeserved favor towards us, right? So we get the idea, we confess uh, regularly that we are sinful, we are broken people, and, and in that sin, we are rebelling against God. We're saying, I know better. I don't care what you want, God. I know what is better. I'm going to do what I want to do. And God could respond. We, we see biblically he responds with wrath. He responds with punishment. God chooses not to act that way towards us. Instead, God has acted in grace. He's acted in love towards us. That undeserved love then is, is grace. And so that's what we mean by grace to you. God's undeserved love and favor towards you. So grace to you. We're wishing that upon us, that God's grace. And now peace. I want to unpack this idea of peace to you a little bit. Okay? I'm not going to ask you for a definition because I've got a couple we're going to work with. So uh, we have this word peace, and there's several things that might come to mind when you first hear that. One of the first ones for me that came to mind is illustrated by this. This is actually a picture that Picasso made. I didn't know he had done this. I googled uh, this, the idea for this image. This came up. What, what is it? It's a dove. What's the dove carrying? Olive branch. Funny, you can't see anywhere close to that detail, but you know that's what this is. This is a dove carrying an olive branch because it is a universal symbol for, for peace, right? Uh, we talk about the idea that it's the dove, also representative of the Holy Spirit, God's desire for peace in our lives. Um, and when we talk about this kind of peace, we're talking uh, peace in the sense of there's peace and not what? Peace as opposite of War. Okay, so wartime peace is the idea here. That's not quite what Paul's after, okay, when we say grace and peace to you. I would love to be able to wake up to that setting every day. Anybody else? Right? Nice, beautiful lake, house, calm, crystal clear, smooth as glass water, nice cup of coffee. Steam's rising up, right? This, to me, is an idea of peace and tranquility, right? It's beautiful. you got this wonderful, wonderful light. Maybe you got some birds singing. Anybody else, by the way, have the birds singing quite loudly by their windows? I have a mockingbird. I don't know how much longer he'll be there. <clears throat> He'd have to move on by himself. I will not hurt the mockingbird. But uh, I show you this picture because this is the idea of peace I want you to start to have. As God talks about peace... Uh, there's some other definitions here, and I'm going to show first. We're going to share first before we go on. Um, Webster's defines this kind of peace, and this is where I got this image from. Mental calmness. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mental calmness or serenity. Okay. Uh, if, if you could look at your thoughts, I think this is what we would see if we're talking about peace, Right. No disturbances, nice and calm, serene, uh, just a beautiful, peaceful picture. Now, as we think about that, and this is what we say we want when we have peace, is this where your thoughts are, usually? 
Okay, good. Somebody honest shook their head no right away. Thank you. I think this is a better picture of where our thoughts are at. Maybe there's not enough detail in there. I don't know. Uh, what is this? Is this a peaceful, calm setting? No, this is what? Waves crashing, right? Uh, this, is, that's a, this is a picture I took. I guess I should have picked a better one. So those are waves crashing against a rock. Frothy, foamy water. Um, if, if this is peace, this is, I said the word earlier, anxiety. Full of worry, constant churning of our thoughts. As I prepared for this, I started looking some things up. Uh, when you start thinking about mental health, uh, anxiety is the number one mental health issue in, in the country. Okay? Uh, and, and I think it's important we can begin to start talking about and having these conversations, understanding that anxiety is, 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 is tremendously common for us, and therefore mental, mental issues, mental health issues are common for us. And so it's good and important for us to talk about it, and anxiety is the number one uh, thing going on in our heads. And so I want to start tonight or continue tonight then. What brings us anxiety? Right now, you might start to answer, and I had started to answer, and I started getting pictures, and I could show all this stuff, but then I realized as I did that, that's my list of things that make me anxious. And is my list going to be the same as your list? Probably not. Okay, you have all sorts of different things. So I, I looked up most common sources of anxiety. Good old Google found a site uh, that talked about the, the top 11 things, okay? Number one, for this list anyway, health issues. I think we can get that right. We've got some prayers tonight for health issues, like things that cause, doesn't matter whether it's your health issues, the health issues of a loved one, number one priority for bringing anxiety into our lives. Uh, medications. So medications that you're taking can bring a chemical change to your brain. Uh, I've had it happen, Okay where you have that, and so I'm guessing you don't have to raise hands. We're not looking for any of that here, okay? But medications can affect you, uh, affects your brain chemistry. Caffeine, anybody ever get anxious because they've had too much caffeine? I've seen some of you, okay? Skipping meals, I, I didn't understand that one. I don't know what it's talking about. <laughs> Actually, what commercial does that refer, kind of referring to? When you get hangry, because you skipped a meal, because it changes your attitude, right? So skipping meals makes you hangry. Uh, negative thinking, I think that's probably one of the first things we go to. We know negative thinking, so those things constantly going over and over in your head, uh, and you get in certain situations. Financial situations, social situations, conflict in general causes anxiety, stress, public events. Uh, today, the, the uh, Miss Kuiper's class got to do a... Uh, they were a wax museum next door, and they got to memorize parts for these characters, and you, get to, you go up and you touch their shoulder, and they come to life, and they recite this stuff that they have. Fantastic job. I promise the anxiety levels were, were high, but they did a fantastic job. They did amazing, but uh, neat for them to learn kind of some of those situations and how to cope with that. So wonderful thing they got to do today. Public events. Are, and then the last one here, it lists any number of personal, and this is kind of a buzzword these days, triggers. Any number of things that might make you get anxious in any sort of situations. People talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, and when you get back into a spot that it, it, it triggers something and it causes you to, to have some anxiety. That's the reality of the world we live in. And, and again, I don't, I don't want hands to show, but, but I suspect a fair number of us have had anxiety issues at one time or another. And I'll be honest, as I share some of this, this is on, on my heart and mind because of my own personal anxiety issues, I'm going to say, at least the past year and a half, uh, doctor's visits to try to help and other things, uh, all to begin to try to cope with this and, and realize that it is a common issue and important for us to talk about and important for us to see tonight I share because I want to hear what God has to say about it. And I want you to hear what God has to say about anxiety. So let's go to Philippians chapter 4 and see what God does say. I hope you know this verse. You've probably heard it before, or at least some portion of it. Do not be anxious about anything. Okay, I didn't highlight that one, but don't be anxious about anything. Sure, Lord. 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. First, I want you to see that the two words we started talking about tonight are here. Peace and anxious. Peace and anxiety, right? That, that God understands something of what is going on in our lives. Now, um, We want to understand what to do about this. And, and some people will have advice. Well, just don't worry. Well, there's a meme actually going around, a picture online that says just that. The person says, I'm so worried about such and such. And the person says, well, just don't worry about it. To which the person sarcastic replies, well, why didn't I think of that? I should have just stopped. Right? If it was easy to do, if it was easy to stop worrying, what would we do? You'd stop worrying. Is it easy to do? When you have something bothering you, when you have something that is heavy on your heart, your mind, it's, it's not easy to do. Here, I want you to see, as Paul talks to us, we might respond some of that way to Paul. Sure, Paul, don't be anxious about anything, but just pray about it. Well, that sounds easy at first, right? But I, I want you to understand that this is God's word to us, and God is telling us not to say that it's easy, but he's providing a path, he's providing a way for us to cope and to deal with these things. Don't be anxious about anything, but, but first, it's your pop quiz. First do what? Pray. Pray. And I want you to see that as we begin to unpack this, one of the reasons I think that this works, and one of the things that I know the reason it works is because when you're anxious about something, what are you focusing on? If, you're, if it's a health issue and you're anxious about the health issue, what are you thinking about over and over and over again? The health issue. And your mind and attention is focused on whatever it is the object of your, of your anxiety is. Here in the prayer, what, is, what has to happen when you pray? If I'm anxious about a health issue and I begin to pray about the health issue, where does my focus necessarily move to? Moves to Jesus. God invites us to think about him in the situation rather than simply focusing on the negative situation. And... and, and and believe me, I understand that's not easy. I understand in the depths of, of, of tremendous anxiety and worry that sometimes it's hard to even do that, right? I will say my own experience, when you think about it, okay, I should be praying, I should be reading my Bible. And you just think, it's not going to help because the devil gets in our head and we start thinking those ways and we begin to deny that that's even going to happen. But God invites us and he promises something here. Notice, don't be anxious pray with thanksgiving. It's even harder to do, right? Let your request be made known. And what does he promise happens? You begin to have peace. Now, does that mean that your anxiety is going to disappear overnight, disappear in that moment? No. But he does begin to say that you will begin to have a peace. And, it's, and I really appreciate the word. And we say this actually at the end of the, end of the sermons, a peace that... That does what? Surpasses understanding. Have you ever thought about what that means? It's a peace that you won't, you won't get. I shouldn't be at peace right now. I shouldn't have this calmness. He promises that as we have these anxieties, as we pray to him, that a peace will come over us that we don't understand. That sounds kind of nice, actually. So he invites us to pray and to be in the word. Now, one of the things that this verse points us to then is all too often we don't pray. When we have much anxiety, when we have much worry, and, and my own confession of this, and, and as I talked to you about my own things over the past year and a half or so, uh, I wasn't there. And there was not prayer. And there wasn't enough time in the Word. And one of the very first things I recognize in, in some of the talking is you have to be there. And, and uh, you have to be in the Word. And, you know, any a number of us, especially church, church workers, are especially prone to this. When we are in the Word, it's all too often for work purposes. I've got to tell you, it's just not the same. Okay? When you're in the Word preparing for a sermon, preparing for something else, you're listening to it, but it's not, it's not for you. And so I hope, I hope for you, if you're out of the Word, be back in the Word. Right? Uh, we, 
maybe this verse, maybe it's some of the psalm verses printed in the bulletin for you, the psalm verse tonight chosen specifically as we start thinking about these ideas. It doesn't even have to be this big a portion of scripture. It can be a very small one. One of the ones I will say for me uh, is, was a psalm, uh, a very short passage in the psalms, a short phrase even I should say, uh, the Lord, the Lord is my strength and my shield and ever-present help in trouble. So when those anxious thoughts would come into my head, the Lord is my strength and my shield and ever-present help in trouble. I didn't have to just say it once because that didn't usually work. It might take 10, 15 times. Maybe I sound like a crazy person to somebody, but you begin saying those things. Other verses that might work. How many of you remember your confirmation verse? There you go. Maybe that anchors you and holds you into God's promises. All of that so that you begin to point to prayer, so that you begin seeing Jesus instead of simply with the one thing that is holding you captive in your thoughts and being full of anxiety. Now, the other part to this is that when we get anxious, we begin to feel trapped. We begin to feel isolated. You begin to feel as if, um, well, let's use the water analogy. You feel like you're going to get overcome. And if you're overcome by water, you're going, to, you're going to drown. Let's go to the verse that we read tonight. And this is all I chose Isaiah. As I read a devotion preparing for this and, and looking for some scripture passages, this one came up. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Notice something that is inherently hidden in this that you don't necessarily understand. It does, and, and I want you to see waters, right, as troubles, anxieties, whatever's going, whatever the bad things that are happening. When you pass through the waters, does it say that you won't pass through the waters? No, it says when you pass through the waters. So that means that there is going to be, there's going to be water. And by that we mean trouble, anxieties, whatever. So when that happens, what's the promise? I'm with you. I will be with you. So first remember, as you, if you have those anxious thoughts and as you turn to God in prayer, the first promise is, I will be with you. And as you continue to go through it, and, 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 I, and I had never thought about it until this devotion pointed this out to me as I read this yesterday, as I read this in preparing, especially yesterday. And through the river, so let's picture a river, by the way. Is, is that the river? Probably not. Although there's a great place in Canada that looked like that, the Madawaska River. I, anyway, that's an aside. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be detract. That's probably more what the river feels like, right? And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. The water is going to be there. The water is going to be raging and moving along, but it will not overwhelm you is the promise. Now, I want you to think about this. Here's the image that came to mind for me as I thought about this, right? Think about the kind of old Western pioneer movies. Right, and you got the team of horses pulling the wagon, and they've gone across the prairie, and what do they come to? A raging river, right? It's always in the springtime flood, and they've got to get across just to the, because it's better on that side. They've probably got to get away from the bad guys, and they've got to cross the river to get to safety. And what do they do? Yeah! And the horses get driven into the water, right? and they're jostling around, and the horses are struggling, and they're driving the horses over and over, and people in the camera cuts to the people in the, uh, I'm going to say buggy. That's not the right word. Huh? The wagon. Thank you. <laughs> it's late. Cuts to the people in the wagon. And what happens to your anxiety, by the way, when you're watching this? You want these good people to be saved, and you want them to get across, and they drags it out, and finally what happens? The horses begin to rise up out of the water, and the wagon gets pulled to safety, and everybody's okay. You were worried that it was going to what? Overwhelm them and sweep them away. And your troubles are going to feel like that, and our anxiety is going to feel that way. God invites you, though. He invites you to not be anxious, to pray. And when you do, It says the peace of God surpasses all understanding will be yours. I don't know what's going on for you. I don't know what struggles there are. It may not be anything right now, and if that's the case, I hope, I hope that's good. But when it does happen, when you are anxious, remember these words. Don't be anxious about anything, but by prayer, turn your heart back to God. Receive that blessing and trust his promise that says peace will be yours because, because he says when you pass through those waters, he is with you. And as you go through the river, 
Whatever those troubles may be, they will not overwhelm you. That is God's promise. May it bring you comfort and peace in whatever situation you face. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, let's rise as we go to God in prayer. I do have one announcement for you on the prayers. Um, Peggy Peggy Berry's brother, Myron Schneider, uh, it was earlier this week, right? Yesterday. Uh, Myron passed away. Uh, His funeral will be Saturday at 11 o'clock at St. James Lutheran Church in Harper, Texas. So Myron Schneider, uh, funeral service, 11 o'clock, St. James Lutheran Church in Harper, Texas. And we pray for, for Peggy and the family. God of grace and mercy, we thank you for the blessings that you have given to us. Lord, we understand that in this world we we are fallen and broken and that there is much anxiety in this world and much to give us anxiety and many things that we do worry about. You invite us, though, to turn to you, to not be anxious, to give, uh, give everything that we are worried about to you, to offer our prayers to you, inviting us to focus on you rather than the things that we worry about. And we trust, Lord, that as we do, as you have promised you will be with us, as you promised we will not be overwhelmed, Lord, you have promised a peace to us. Continue to strengthen our faith and trust in you that we would turn to you in all circumstances, no matter the worries we have, when we feel isolated and alone, when we feel put off by others, when we've hurt others, when, well, whatever the situation it is that brings us anxiety, Lord, we ask you to give us a peace. Give us your peace. Tonight, Lord, we lift up to you uh, several who are on our hearts and minds and and need that very peace that you promise. We pray first, especially for the family of Myron, as you've called him home. Lord, we ask you to comfort that family with the good news uh, of of the resurrection, the promise of eternal life, and pray that you strengthen them and comfort them with that news. For those that are sick or hospitalized, we pray for peace and patience as you bring your healing to them through the doctors and nurses you have caring for them. We pray especially then for David Polnick and James Polnick. We pray your presence with them. And Lord, we lift up to you any others that we have uh, that are experiencing illness that are on our hearts and minds. We pray before you now. Lord, we also know there are many people in Nashville tonight that are uh, suffering with the tornadoes that have gone through there. We know there are many lives lost and, and many displaced. And we pray that Uh, They would be surrounded with help, uh, that it would be quick and effective to them for whatever their needs are, that you would give them an extra measure of your peace and support tonight uh, as as things progress and as they continue to adjust with the new situation. Lord, we pray for these things and many other things in our hearts and minds. In the name of your son, Jesus, who has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.